And what's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? How you doing? How you doing? We doing. Yeah, we doing. All right. Welcome to another Geeking Squad podcast, episode number 14. Ooh, this is for PG-14 audiences only. <laughs> yeah, can you believe, man? Number 14. It's uh, It's been quite a journey. Yeah. <laughs> it's cruising along. That's my boy. Uh, yeah, so we are here to talk about all the things that you see and read in the Geeking Squad group on Facebook. That's what this is based off of. Mm -hmm. I am one of the hosts. I am Larry. Down the way at the end of the dining hall, he is presiding over all of the subjects. He is none other than King Vito. <laughs> and then she is both the princess and court jester. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's a little bit regal. She's a little bit silly. She is none other than Megan. And uh, yeah, we have a group, if you don't already know, that is on Facebook called the Geeking Squad Group. If you're not familiar with it, it is free to join. We welcome mm -hmm. everybody in there. We don't talk politics or religion or any of that kind of hooey. Nope. Don't bring it there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get the boot. What what we do talk about is all the geeky pop culture stuff that we love. It's movie trailers and TV shows and miniseries and comics and dinosaurs and UFOs and <laughs> all the kind of stuff that makes nerds' heads explode. Explode. In the best way possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not like that scene from Scanners. Not like no. Scanners. No, 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 no. Let's no, not no. do that. No. <laughs> we enjoy watching those kinds of movies, but we don't want to experience it firsthand. <laughs> So, yeah, we talk about all that kind of stuff. We we encourage you guys to go in there and post memes and articles and polls and all these things. And then we pick the stuff that really catches our eye and we talk about it here on the show. And we're going to get into that in a moment. But as always, I like to ask you guys, how you doing? Same crap. Same New crap. New year, same crap. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, eh, you know. I'm rolling with it. Stay positive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But anyway, now that all the niceties are over and done with, let's yeah, just get, get shit out of the way. right into the nitty gritty of it all. And we're going to talk about stuff in another segment that we affectionately like to refer to as... What's shaking, bacon? <laughs> <laughs> Still love it. 14 episodes later. <laughs> What's there now? Who doesn't love bacon? Right? That's true. You no know? sane person. Exactly. Well, this segment isn't actually about bacon. It's just an old saying. But in What's Shaken Bacon, we like to just talk about a bunch of different uh, recent things that have gone on. And uh, unfortunately, lately, it's just been the way. It is. This is the it way. Is the way. <laughs> this is the way. Unfortunately, speaking of Star Wars, uh, it's just been the way that we keep starting off the show talking about untimely passings and we just lost boba fett we just got boba <laughs> fett back after 37 <laughs> years we just got boba fett back and now we lost him well we didn't actually lose boba fett we lost one of them we lost the original boba fett mm -hmm. we lost actor jeremy bullock very sad. He died. he was only seventy five. I mean, yeah, that's, that's not that's not that old. No, not mm -hmm. not these days. You can remember the days when like seventy five was old. old. That was considered really old, man. And it's like, uh, you know what? I'm not that far. I was just thinking that. I was like, that's not that far away. You really think about it. <laughs> no, not for the likes of me. For you twos? <laughs> no, we're not that far behind you. <laughs> yeah, for you twos, you know. But yeah, well, Vito is like a whole decade behind me, really. So, you know, he, yeah, uh, he's, right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're a little bit closer to me, but still, you know, I'm I'm the oldie. You the, are the oldie. You're the our old fart, old cranky man. <laughs> I, yeah, I am. I can't even argue with that. <laughs> You can insult me all you want, Megan, but... If it's true, know, it's it, true. It is true. <laughs> it was so weird. I remember there was a magazine called Fantastic Films. Mm. There were magazines that came out back in the early uh, 80s, throughout the 80s, late 70s. They were like Starlog. Are you familiar with Starlog? Mm -hmm. Like the original sci-fi magazine. And they had a feature. It was Boba Fett, you know, like an interview with Boba Fett. And I was like, oh, wow, that's weird. Mm -hmm. How can they have an interview with Boba Fett? You know, I was, I was like eight, you know. And then they show all these pictures of this, like, well, you know, groomed, handsome British man, <laughs> you know, smiling. And I'm like, that's fucking Boba Fett. <laughs> like, 
That's not, that's not what I pictured no, at all. No, that's not what I pictured <laughs> at all, you know. But I and that was I just remember reading this article and it was like, oh wow, that's really interesting. And my young single digit aged mind like couldn't <laughs> comprehend this because uh, you know I did, it didn't even occur to me that there was just some normal dudes underneath those helmets. <laughs> Uh, Speaking of Star Wars, I just recently posted something in the group that was talking about how fans have voted Rogue One to be the best Disney era Star Wars movie. And I think that that is damn skippy. You guys would. Right. You agree with that. Yeah, I think I would. Because you figure you got Rogue One, Solo. uh, And the three. And then, yeah, Rise of Skywalker. Uh, Force Awakens, Last Jedi. So yeah, Rogue One was my favorite out of those uh, five. Megan, what would you say was your favorite out of those five, Meg? The last one that came out, Rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Wow, you think yeah, Rise? I really of... enjoyed it. I did too. We all did. I I thought. Don't get me wrong. I I enjoyed it, but man, it didn't get me going like fucking Rogue One did. I just, I still have a problem with Rogue One. I I I really need to watch it and not fall asleep in the middle of it. Yeah, that would probably help. I just don't give <laughs> a, a crap about half. these characters. <laughs> There's a whole second half. Yeah. Right? It's like a Stephen King book. It yeah. starts out strong, but man, yeah, the, the it back ends end. Not so strong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, the back end of Rogue One is, is amazing. I'll give you that. How oh. it ends is absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. And that may be what hooks everybody in more than anything. Uh, people that I know are like pretty big Star Wars fans and stuff and like a lot of all of it. Mm-hmm. And I've seen other people that were saying that they were kind of nonplussed by Rogue One too. I was oh, really I'm not alone. No, wow, I was okay. I was really surprised. Hmm. I was really surprised. Yeah, I, that I saw quite a few people actually saying not that it was horrible, but they were just kind of like you. They were just like, eh, mm-hmm. it was okay. It right. was serviceable. And I'm like, wow. Because to me, I that like really. Yeah, you loved it from day one. I both of you loved guys it. and I, I just loved like, eh. it. I, I just don't care about the characters. I can't well, remember their names. See, well, I mean, fair enough. I they they were kind of wonky, weird names in there, <laughs> you know. But Chirrut Imwe, Bays Malbus, and you know, they're they're weird, awkward. Star names. Wars, man. It's, what are you gonna do? <laughs> right, right, right. This is true. This is right. true. Well, they're harder to remember than Boba Fett. You know, and Han Solo, those are easy to remember. Because they're like two syllables and you're done. Right. This yeah. one's like, what <laughs> about Yeah. Jibba de jabba de Yes, exactly. Well, I'm you... bad with names anyway. So, yeah. yeah it just so... set me up for failure right then. <laughs> so am I. Well, but I'm curious. So, I wonder what I really want to see for, for, especially with you, is I want to see if they, if and when they put out the Cassian Andor series on Disney, mm-hmm. if that's good. And you start watching it and stuff. If, if it'll, I'll like it better, yeah. Maybe. If maybe it'll have you have a different perspective, you know, on kind of like the Mandalorian and the Rebels and stuff. Like right? That. Yeah, because yeah. you love Rebels now. I, I love Rebels. That show's amazing. Yeah, she. But I don't know if you would be as invested in it if you hadn't, you know, had that connection now mm-hmm. with absolutely Mandalorian. I guarantee it. Right. So we will have to come back to this. I'll be very curious to see what you think. If it makes it any better or worse, or who knows, you might be like, I love the show. I went back and watched the movie. Still and nothing. Yeah, I like the show way more than the movie. Could happen. Could happen. Then there was other trailers and stuff that came out, but we haven't even really had. A, I, I haven't was, had a chance to watch any yeah, of them. Yeah, wasn't, yeah. wasn't there? Wasn't there an Ahsoka trailer that came out? Ahsoka trailer came out. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm intrigued by all of it, but the one trailer that I did watch that I am super stoked about is the What If animated series. Mm. Did either of you guys watch the trailer for it? No. Dude, even just thinking about it, it's making me tingly. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Well, first of all, What If was a comic book series that started in the 1970s. I don't know if you guys know what it's about. Isn't that one of your favorite comic book series? I know you've talked about it before. Dude, I actually have... Drone on and on and on about it, hasn't it? Man, oh man. Not really. I'm just just being mean. I mean, I know I do that, but... (laughs) I know I have actually a what if what if number 15 I think it is I have framed on my wall at mm. home because mm. it was one of the very first comic books I ever bought back when I was only like six or seven years old and it made this huge impression on me and it was about Nova go figure because <laughs> you know I love the this the Nova core and the whole Nova thing and stuff anyway that's not important the point of the matter <laughs> is is that it's a cool series where it's all told it's narrated by the watcher 
which the watcher is that big headed guy that we see a cameo of him in one of the one of the movies i forget and i think guardians they show the watchers up on that one planet stan lee is sitting there talking to him as he's oh. and everything you get one little cameo of the watchers that's the only thing they've been in the mcu so far but they're like these celestial beings that oversee the universe mm. and they're aware of like all the multiverses mm. and all that kind of stuff so what if tells multiverse stories so like for example and you see in the trailer like in one multiverse uh peggy carter agent carter becomes the super soldier not steve rogers really oh. yeah so she there is no captain america she's like captain britain or something well there is a captain britain actually but really, she's, really? <laughs> yeah she's, i always thought that like th those were so funny like can you imagine like colonel russia is yeah. like a super so like it doesn't <laughs> it just makes me laugh I, there's only captain america and that's it for no me. there's I all just, sorts wait till wait till you see the black widow movie yeah because then there's like all these like russian superhero kind of people like that that are is very and they're very nationalistic you know <laughs> No, and there's Captain Britain, and there's there's all there's all that kind of shit. Now you made me actually maybe want to go see that movie. Yeah, oh, Black Widow. Yeah, you didn't want to see it already. No. Oh wow. No, the trailer didn't do it for me. Yeah, I agree. The trailer wasn't like a real big draw for me. But a, it's Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow, who I think is great. <laughs> no, I mean I love that character, and it's got Hopper from Stranger Things in it. Yeah. And I don't know what it is with him constantly being tied to Russian things because <laughs> in Stranger Things, there's like a Russian thing in that too. But yeah. oh, 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 am I giving away spoilers? Maybe. Oh, yeah. Vito hasn't seen all that yet. Mm -mm. Okay. That I'm wasn't not... too much of a spoiler. So. Yeah. You, you, yeah. It, you're not going to glean what I'm talking about all from right. what no. I just said. You got to still watch Stranger Things, I know, dude. I know. All right. Anyway, um, What If looks great. So it's going to tell all these, these alternate universe stories, these What If stories. They're also getting a lot of the original actors from the MCU to do the voices of the characters. Oh, is it going to be animated? It's I animated, it, but see. the animation is awesome. Is it? It's really cool animation. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, just like we were talking about with Rebels and mm -hmm. stuff where we're like, eh, you got to get used to that animation. Mm -hmm, yeah. No, man, this is Marvel. They ain't fucking around. Okay. It's really cool, classic classic style animation i don't think i can watch this show why because i have a hard enough time keeping things straight oh. without them switching the story <laughs> around on me you're gonna be later like getting confused you're gonna like, be like, wait no, wait wait no wait no, no. didn't this happen it's like that was alternate universe meg yeah i'm so screwed uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be putting your geek brain you know to the test i need to exercise that thing out <laughs> <laughs> uh. well on a different note Another thing that got released uh, just recently was some news, and I know you're very excited about this I'm one. Very excited about this one. <laughs> and what was that? That is the new Dungeons and Dragons movie, which I'm would be like a whatever, but it's going to star my heartthrob, amazing, so sexy. <laughs> Chris Pine. <laughs> oh boy. Pine for pine. I, I am a pine nut. <laughs> pine nut through and through over here. You are a pine nut. Yes. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, Chris Pine, who we know as being the uh, Kelvin universe uh, Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk. Is always in, uh, also in uh, Wonder Woman mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, he's great. I love Chris Pine. Yeah, he's, he's, he's amazing. He's awesome. Uh, I don't know anything about this movie. That, that's all they really said. Yeah. I mean, it's Dungeons and Dragons. What is there to know? I mean, Didn't they make a movie with Marlon Wayans and he was in Dungeons and Dragons like back in the 2000s, early yeah, 90s or something? There like was that? a 2000 and then a couple sequels after that from 2005 and 2012 and none of them did really well yeah i, I didn't even know those existed <laughs> i i didn't yeah. either till i read the article i was like oh okay but they didn't have like big stars oh. like chris pine is right now so they're yeah. hoping maybe this will do better well in dungeons and dragons is really had a like a renaissance it's so popular again, you know. Yeah, because that was like more of an underground thing at that time, anyway. You know. Yeah, yeah. In the early two thousands, I think it had kind of, yeah, it kind of dipped in popularity and mm -hmm. became became sort of kitschy and weird. But now it's like, no, there's tons of kids and stuff that play. I mean, look at Stranger Things, right? And how right, that yeah, that they play it deals with the whole Dungeons and Dragons thing. Mm -hmm. So no, it's it's really popular again and everything. So that that movie might do really well. I definitely want to see it. I will go see it. I don't care. <laughs> I'm seeing it. Well, the thing that I got all excited about that they're going to reboot, it's not a movie. No. 
You know what I'm singing. If night you're from Court. Yup, Night Court. <laughs> Dude, they're rebooting Night Court. Well, they're, it's not a reboot. It almost is more like a sequel. Sequel, yeah. Mm. So because obviously uh, Harry Stone, yeah. a- Anderson, he's he passed away. He's not with us anymore, unfortunately. Neither is Bull, which is a shame. Yeah. That's right. Richard yeah. Mall. So, you know, two of them. Or the main- Mel Torme. Yeah, so it's... <laughs> right. <laughs> so, like, a lot of people are gone, which is a shame. But John Larroquette is very much still here with us, mm-hmm. and he's coming back as Dan Felding, which is amazing. <laughs> but they're going to have the new judge is actually going to be Judge Harry's daughter. Mm-hmm. Now, they haven't cast her yet. No. But, I mean, normally these things get announced, and I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, oh, man, Why? I don't know, man. You excited I'm, for this one? I'm going into this one with like, you know. This one's doing it for you? Yeah, with uh, an open mind mm-hmm. and some reasonably high expectations. It, if they do it right, it could be great. Mm-hmm. It It's all going to depend on what kind of writers and everything they, they get. Because, I mean, there's some great stuff on like NBC. You know, they've done great things like Parks and Rec and... And the office and all those kind of things. So if they are able to like, because they're not going to be able to do the kind of humor exactly like they did back in no, the early 80s. I don't think they can get away with some of that. <laughs> it's kind of risque, some of it. <laughs> Especially Larroquette stuff, because he was such a womanizer and he was yeah. you know, yeah. a chauvinist. And I it, haven't seen it in years. Oh, you should, you should watch it sometime. They show it. It's on one of the TV land or one of those things. Yeah. They show it during primetime hours. Every now and then I'll catch it and I'll watch it and it's... It's really funny. And especially because it's got some humor on there that you're like, ooh, <laughs> can't believe you say that. And he's calling, you know, these just some of the things he's saying on there. You're like, oh, don't get no. us in trouble. We're no, I'm not. In. I'm not going to quote it. But you just you just can't let you kind of nervously laugh at it. Go, oh, boy, I can't believe he's saying that. <laughs> but yeah, it's so that that looks that looks pretty cool. Speaking of those channels like. Like Me TV and TV Land and all that. Me TV just announced they are bringing back old time Saturday morning cartoons. That's amazing. I was literally just thinking, I miss Saturday morning cartoons. And then you post that. I was like, oh, really? Yeah. It's gonna be like the old timey stuff and too. It, and it's the old stuff. It's not stuff. just the new shit. It's gonna be it's gonna be Looney Tunes, mm-hmm. uh Tom and Jerry, Popeye. Popeye. All that kind of, so I'm like, oh, so it's literally just the stuff I watch all the time anyway. <laughs> Three hours of awesomeness. Yeah. Now the problem is, am I going to be up at that time? No. Well, I, well, maybe. I was just saying, me, I'm I'm such a night person now anyway that I'm I'm I don't even go to bed until like nine o'clock in the morning anymore. Yeah, you'll get to see most of it then. So then What's yeah. it start at seven a.m.? Six. It oh, starts at for people that are on the East Coast. It starts at seven, six Central. I see. No clue what it's going to be on the West Coast. I don't know how that works. So West Coast. A couple hours later. Yeah, you're out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's how it's going to be. So that's pretty okay. exciting. I mean, it's not exactly like it's bringing back. You know, it's one thing if it would be like CBS, NBC, and ABC were bringing back their whole five-hour Saturday morning thing. Mm-hmm. That's okay. This is something. Yeah. This I'm, is something. I'm just hoping like maybe they'll do cool stuff like they should bring back the old PSAs that they br- play oh, yeah. between, you know, time for timer, you know. A hanker for a hunker, a slim a slam a chunker. <laughs> oh my gosh. And yet won't spoil my dinner. A hanker for a hunk of cheese. Yahoo! <laughs> totally forgot about that yeah. guy. <laughs> Dude, time for timer. Or the one when he shows you how to make the uh, the snacks by pouring the the uh, tang drink into the ice cube tray, yeah, yeah. and you you cover it with uh, plastic wrap and you put toothpicks in there, mm-hmm. and then you have like popsicles. Yeah. Yep. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I'd watch it just for those. Exactly. Maybe play <laughs> Schoolhouse Rock and stuff like that. Like, I mean, you do that. I'm I'm all in we'll have to get those i don't know what channel it was on but they had the three singers where they sing it and they all switch heads they're like we'll be right back oh, oh yeah after yeah, these yeah. messages we'll be right back mm-hmm. yeah that's abc i don't ABC, know if they okay yeah i don't know if they'd get the rights to that kind of thing probably not but that would be freaking awesome mm-hmm. so anyway yeah that was that was cool news to hear about that and speaking of bringing other things back apparently coming back to disney is one that you'll probably want to watch, I'm sure. Absolutely. 
And what is it? Dinosaurs from the 90s. It's good stuff. <laughs> See, I'm not alone. It's 65 episodes of awesomeness is what that is, Larry. Yeah, it's funny. I'll watch it. It's just that was by the time that came out, I was older. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like 18 when that came out. So that 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 seemed like stupid and kitty to me, even though I was still very much watching like old Woody Woodpecker and all that kind of stuff. That was the stuff I grew up with. That didn't say, that seem... was more nostalgic for you. Right, right, exactly. Uh, dinosaurs, I remember watching it. I was just like, you know, my stepbrother watched that kind of stuff. I was like, okay, you know, it felt like his thing. But you guys are more like my stepbrother's age, so it makes sense. But yeah, I'm sure... a lot. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> but I, I, I guess, uh, I think that a lot of people are going to be excited about it. Cause I've noticed like a resurgence of stuff. Like I've even noticed lately, like we're just like with things like golden girls, like now all of a sudden you see golden girls merchandise everywhere, everywhere yeah. and all these things I've noticed, like all of a sudden going into like target and there's a dinosaurs t-shirt and I'm like, really, <laughs> really dinosaurs. That's going to things. Be- yeah. Well, so- it's like, you know, people like us that grew up on it that have kids are probably introducing their kids to those shows and that's now they're, true. you know, yeah, that's true. And I think, Everything that goes around comes around, you know, it's and it and it was popular at the time. Mm-hmm. It had all those stupid catchphrases. Not the mama. Oh god. <laughs> that stupid kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had all that stuff. So pretty soon I imagine we're gonna suddenly see like there's gonna be all sorts of Urkel stuff again. Oh, oh dude, I fucking that'd love be amazing. Family Matters, man. <laughs> it's one of my favorite shows back then. I know. All right, the whole TGIF. Yeah. Bring that back. That would be Fuck amazing. Yeah. yeah, people would be really excited. Step by that. step. Fuck yeah, step by step. Yeah, with your Patrick Duffy leg. Yeah. <laughs> Behold my Patrick Duffy leg. <laughs> yeah. St- step. I'd wa- I. You know what? I would watch all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm waiting for them to bring back Hang Time from NBC. Hang Time. Wow. Loved Hang Time, man. <laughs> you ever see Hang Time, Megan? I don't know if I did. It was about like this Indiana um, basketball high school basketball team. Uh huh. Yep. It was, it was kind of like Saved by the Bell, but it was based around a basketball team. Gotcha. Yeah. What about that whole Saved by the Bell reboot thing? Have you seen that? I haven't watched it yet. That's got like Slater on it and all mm-hmm. this stuff. I'm like, it's okay. It's got them all. <laughs> That's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how they brought them all back. I kind of want to see that, but I think they're supposed to be like teachers and parents and stuff now. And I'm Are like, they? Yeah, because I saw the one thing when he was like talking to the to the one kid and he was like yeah is basically like being like i used to bang your mom kind of thing <laughs> oh like, my gosh <laughs> you're like kelly kapowski yeah i fucked her kind of thing you know or something like that <laughs> wow he doesn't say that but it was basically not word like, for word yeah, that? no it was basically oh, okay. the idea you know that he did yeah i know they got in trouble for the whole selena gomez knocking her for her surgery she had really? life-saving surgery did so, they yeah oh, that's wow. the only thing i've really seen about it hmm so okay. They had to like take that back. Yeah, that's wow. getting off on the wrong foot. <laughs> right. <laughs> Way to go, guys. Never yeah, learned. One job and they blew it. <laughs> but um, you know, getting back to the dinosaur thing for a minute. What is what was this that I saw a picture of it and I was like, what is this? They found some other dinosaur that yeah, they never it's like knew? Some two legged freaky dinosaur. He's like the size of a chicken, but he Wait. had Okay, go on, go on. He's a what? baby dinosaur. He's just a little guy on two legs, like a chicken. And he has like a mane, which is what's really weird. Mm-hmm. A mane of like hair like mane things. Okay. Like they're like feathers. But what's really weird, out of his shoulders, he has these two spike kind of thingies mm-hmm. that are made of keratin, like our hair and our nails and stuff like that. Really? So they're really stiff. And you're like, what is that all yeah. about? So it's just like, this is something we've never seen before. What is this? I don't understand. Is, was it covered by more of these things? And it just, these are the only two that survived preservation? Yeah, that's- They don't that, know. They have a ton of questions on this thing still. That's my question is like, how did they just never know this thing ever even existed before? Like with all the research. I mean, I, I get that. I, I don't know. There's certain things that I can understand them not finding more of. But you would think something like this, like other- bird things like there there had to be bi- millions of them maybe well i think the theory was that dinosaurs were covered with bird hair and hair. fur and stuff the feathers but, yeah yeah so mm-hmm. maybe this is just proving more of that theory i guess yeah or maybe or this chicken or whatever was part of like a wwe dinosaur wrestling league and he was like a <laughs> legion of doom tag team member or something 
I don't know. He had him surgically yeah. implanted yeah. on him. Yeah. Or he was just wearing his fucking shoulder pads and they just found him fossilized like that. And they just think it's his bone structure, but in actuality, it was just his costume. Exactly. You know? Vito and, solved the mystery uh, yeah. right now. <laughs> Got it. When the fucking, when he saw the fucking uh, comet coming down to hit Earth and wipe him out, he, he, he looked at the dead bird, looked up and he went, oh, what a rush. <laughs> 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 like the Legion of Doom, like the Road Warriors. Hawk and animal. And here's, what is this thing? He's a hawk <laughs> animal. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm sorry yeah maybe it was just like that it was maybe it was like later in the evolutionary stage so maybe there just wasn't very Enough many of them around him. before yeah. they got wiped out who maybe knows maybe we'll start finding them could yeah. be you never this know was like what in brazil or something like that some yeah. yeah yes it was in northeastern brazil yeah Weird. And one last weird thing uh, before we take a break is the fact that apparently they found some, they think they found some 9,000 year old Stonehenge like structure right near us mm-hmm. underneath Lake Michigan. I, like, yeah, this, this was interesting because it sounds like it's like it's a circle. Mm-hmm. Okay, like Stonehenge, mm-hmm. it has a whole bunch of rocks and everything. But what really got them was there's actually a carving on it of a mastodon. Really? And like, where did this come from? It could be if it's, they're trying to collect pictures and stuff like that because they're having a hard time. The people that archaeologists and stuff aren't usual divers. Mm, so you're like, okay. I can't really get them down there to see this in person. So they're like trying to get pictures and trying to validate all this by that mm-hmm. to prove it is what they say it is or think they it think it is okay but if it is correct it could be like ten thousand years old wow and it's i'm not for sure if i was reading this right but it sounds like the rocks and stuff are kind of like even in the shape of a mastodon really like the circle Hmm. underwater mastodon graveyard huh right so it was kind of interesting especially being so close to us but i guess they were saying like if it is proven true yeah it's not the only one like it in Mm. the area Oh. So it wouldn't be out of character for it to be here. I think we need Graham Hancock on this one. He's to write a book about these ancient artifacts, I think. Yeah, I think we need to hit him up. I think so. Could be. Could happen. It could happen. I guess time will tell. You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal, providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. All right, and I think it's about time that we get into a little bit of the good old squad talk. Talking the squad. Always talking to that damn squad. You just (laughs) never learn, young lady. (laughs) I can't help it. keep warning you about talking to that squad, and yet I keep finding you out here talking to them. You're grounded. But, Dad. No squad for you. Taking Mm. my bong, going home. I hate you. Not the last time I've heard that one. (laughs) Anyway, here on Squad Talk, it's we pick a particular thing that was brought up in the Geeking Squad group, and we like to focus on it a little bit more specifically. And this time we are talking about Japan. What about Japan? The island of Japan is over in the Pacific. (laughs) No, I'm not going to turn into a grade school movie that you had to watch on one of those rickety old projectors and stuff. Let's not do that. Um, no, I, apparently J- Japan opened a Hayabusa 2 capsule. It Was it they had been sent into outer space? How did this work exactly? So it sounds like they sent this satellite or whatever up into space to go intercept this asteroid, Ryugu? Ryugu, yeah. Ryugu. Oh, I got it. Ryugu. Ryugu. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ryu. 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 Yeah. It's, it's the old Street Fighter debate. How, yep, how, do yep. you, how do you pronounce Ryu or Ryu? So yeah. I guess either one goes in this case. So. Yeah. Yeah. So this Japanese space agency, I think it's called JAXA. JAXA, yes. So that's this, the Japanese agency. This shuttle or whatever up into space to intercept this asteroid. And its job is to send down... Um, something to collect 
samples of the asteroids. So they like sent down like this big bomb or whatever and blew up a whole big crater of nice. it yeah. to get down to <laughs> F- fucking asteroids like going across just like i'm just traveling i'm just traveling through just traveling through space man and all of a sudden some fucking asshole japanese fucking satellite comes and just like bum, bums away and drops it and, what the hell man what are you doing you're blowing me up i'm just flying through i'm just passing by neptune damn yeah but yeah sorry so- anyway i just had this little picture in my head <laughs> so they blow up this whole big crater so they can get down to the good stuff and then they send down a couple of things to collect samples uh-huh. and they don't even know if it collected anything or anything of good right samples until, until it, it came comes back. back right yeah yeah so it landed in what australia in yeah uh, yeah it, it yeah it landed it landed in the australian outback just like a just a few just weeks, weeks ago, ago. Right? and they when did they launch this thing when did it first go up how long has it been up there i want to say it was like 2014 yeah like yeah okay that sounds about right so it took six years total that's not bad yeah because i think it was it stayed in orbit of it and you know for so many years collecting all these samples and everything and then it like shot it back down to earth yeah because the actual satellite or whatever is still in space oh. it's on its way to another oh nice asteroid oh that's to collect cool more. Yeah. see i didn't know that yeah i kept they kept it going These japanese are efficient man i'm telling right? you <laughs> sure like, Damn, that's smart. they're like we're not just gonna keep building we're a just bunch gonna of- dump this in the ocean like you idiot americans and then you're just <laughs> one and done man no we're reusing this motherfucker <laughs> <Right>? exactly <laughs> Exactly. So. Besides, if they just dumped it in the ocean with their fucking luck, some kind of fucking <laughs> some monsoon is going to come and dump <laughs> it back. Kaiju was going to show up. <laughs> oh my That's god! That's what it brought back a fucking kaiju egg from this asteroid, and now we're going to have fucking Godzilla in our hands for wow. twenty twenty one. We have something in Well, what they're hoping because they're just now starting to break into it, and they okay. just they just cut the tip of it. Just the tip? Just the, just, tip, huh? just the tip of it, of so yeah. the iceberg here. Well, usually you're safe when you just get the tip. It, always. That's the way to go. Yeah. It's a fail safe, I can tell you. <laughs> so, but they're hoping what they could find in there, because all this crater, or this asteroid and everything, the samples, date back to the beginning of our solar system. Mm, wow. So what they're hoping to find is kind of the elements that created life for Earth. Nice. Right. So Very they can cool. kind of, I guess, trace it. I don't know what they want to do with it from there. Yeah, but. Well, that gets over our heads a little bit, I'm sure, you know. Yeah, but they want to know, does this thing hold water? Did water, our water come from this asteroid? Yeah, like, does it have any, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Because, I mean, we don't really know. We've had some asteroid fragments, of course, land on Earth, right. but mm-hmm. we don't, you nothing know, like nothing that is specific like this where we got it. Yeah, we were able to scoop it right out of its ass like that. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. And then there's other, they're looking for like seed-like rocks, I think it was, called chon- chondrules, chon- chondrules, yeah. chondrules, something like that. And I mean, that sounds like, you know, is that our little seed or earth and it kind of grew into something bigger? Mm, yeah. We water it and it became earth? It's a ch- asteroid chia pet or something. <laughs> right? ch ch chia ch 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 chondrules So that <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, at first I was like, why Why do we even care about an asteroid? I don't understand. It's right. not coming at us. We don't need to blow it like Armageddon or something right. like that. <laughs> yeah, what That's if, why you're blowing it up. I but. was just going to say, what if you do that and suddenly you fuck up its tra- normal trajectory and <laughs> right? it's like five years from now, it's like, oh, guess what? It's coming back around. Yeah, guys, we kind of miscalculated that bomb. And, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, originally this thing would have never been in our orbit, but now it's headed right for us. Yep. It's like, where is it headed, sir? It's headed right for Japan. For Japan. <laughs> it's like, and Japan's like, fuck. <laughs> Can't catch a break. <laughs> so anyway, I was like, why, why do we care? But I guess all that stuff, it, it makes more sense. We're just trying to understand our own planet. Yeah. Right. That's cool, like, All right, man. I'll give them a path, pass on that. That just doesn't even seem real that we're, we're able to do that, like figure that stuff out from the universe. It's the 14.5 billion years old or whatever it's really yeah, yeah it's crazy it man mm-hmm. i'm surprised now it's not even just that i'm surprised that they can do it i'm surprised like you said earlier the efficiency and the speed because when i found out that they sent this up they only just sent this up in 2014 and already six years later we've already got something back from it i'm so used to in the past it's like well we sent up this fucking satellite back in like 1962 <laughs> it's now like 2012 and we're just now getting our you know data back from yeah. it 
And guess what? It's so old now, it doesn't matter, <laughs> right? you know? Yeah, because I think it... If I remember correctly, I think it, we launched in, or Japan launched in 2014. It took like two years to get to it. Right. It orbited till 2018, collecting all this data, and then it came back to land in 2020. Yeah. And now it's on its way to this smaller asteroid. Nice. That's cool. NASA just said that they're going to launch a Europa mission in like five or seven years. They're going to go to Jupiter and then fly back and forth to Europa to get samples of the ocean and, and the crust and stuff. That's nice. Yeah. This article also said that NASA's Osiris Rex is yeah. scheduled mm-hmm. to um, return from another asteroid in 2023. Nice. Okay, so we'll have more results in like two years. Mm-hmm. There was that fillet lander that landed on that comet a few years ago. You guys remember that one that the a European Space Agency la- launched? Yeah, it had its vaguely. own Twitter page and it said, hey, now I just landed, but I got to shut down now. And oh, yeah, the fillet lander. Yeah, and then yeah. didn't Japan come out with its like its kind of pseudo version of it? Wasn't the Ginsu lander? <laughs> and its whole thing was that it could cut right through <laughs> asteroid, asteroid rock. <laughs> it could cut through a tin can. <laughs> the, the Ginsu lander is... And you could... <laughs> And I heard you could get them like late night on television in a two pack for nineteen ninety five. <laughs> Shipping and handling paid. But wait, there's, there's more. more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I d- seriously though, yeah, I I do remember that. That's that's funny. But dude, th- so they're gonna go to Europa, huh? I don't uh, think they're gonna be able to land on there, but they're gonna be able to orbit and go back and forth and find out more data and stuff. Well, you, so. Make no attempt to land on Europa. (laughs) All these worlds are yours except for Io and Europa. (laughs) Attempt no landing there. Don't you listen? And we don't listen. And we've had all these. What have we talked about on here? We've had all these monoliths popping up, and now they're going to fucking Jupiter and Europa. We're fucked. (laughs) We're fucked. We're going to have two suns. Jupiter's going to explode. We're going to have two suns like goddamn Luke Skywalker. That'd be kind of cool. And I, I, it probably wouldn't bode well for us. I would love the heat. <sighs> That's true. You're always cold. <laughs> I'm freezing right now. <sighs> yeah, the bit, the last thing about that, about this whole uh, capsule that came back and everything is that I've seen a lot of people really, well, in, you know, 2020 and everything going mm-hmm. on. A lot of people freaking out about it and being like, should we be bringing stuff like this back and everything? Because we don't know like what it could have on there. Well, it, it sounded in the article that they like kind of like I want to say depressurized it and kind of sanitized. And that's why they're just now getting around to opening mm. this thing. Yeah. They took precautions. So it's not bringing something weird back. I, I hope so. Because I don't think they ever read the Andromeda strain, man. <laughs> I was, that's what I'm saying. It don't take much. Haven't we been through this lately, folks? It don't take much for things to get around. All we need is one fucking goofy ass fucking guy, you know. It's Eating like, a bat or some other bullshit and then... Yeah, it's like some guy named Toki that goes through there, like poking, you know, sweeping up in the place, and then he gets a little bit on him, and it gets released, and it's like, my bad, Toki. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> except we all know from World of Worlds that the alien cannot withstand our bacteria. Right, but how do we know we can withstand their bacteria? They won't be here long enough. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I just, I don't it's know. It's not the bacteria we have to worry about. It's them blowing us up and then them dying from our bacteria. No, I'm worried about that canister having some weird ass fucking alien bacteria in there. Like, what if it's just, you know, what if it's got some kind of weird crotch rot from some fucking alien somewhere and they open it up and now we got alien crotch rot in our fucking atmosphere? Well, if it really is the dawn of the solar system and it has our initial genetics yeah. in it, then we should be okay. Yeah, but we've out- it's natural to Earth. But we've evolved past that stuff now. That's what I'm saying. You know, like we we've, we've evolved too far. We need to be oh, de-evolved. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's one thing that the that you think about. Like we like to talk about on this show. We talk about time travel and all that stuff. People say, "Oh, wouldn't it be so cool to travel back in time?" And I'd want to go back to the time of the dinosaurs. I'm like. Dude, if you traveled back to the time of the dinosaurs, you'd probably die. Because you'd get bit by some fucking yeah. dinosaur era prehistoric mosquito that would have some kind of fucking disease in it that we have since, that has since like disappeared. 
and we're like a you know we we've evolved past that and everything you're gonna get bit by some fucking janky ass dino mosquito and you're gonna die like you can't just go back in time like that so that's what worries me about things like this bringing like stuff that could be prehistoric like that from some wacky ass fucking asteroid and then you know i just hope that they're really careful with it when they're opening it and messing around with that stuff because i don't trust anybody anymore (laughs) when it comes to that kind of stuff you know we can't even like be around each other not sneeze Mm -hmm. at this point we're worried about sneezes and it's like uh yeah so we brought back this (laughs) dust this crappy dust from some asteroid that's making a sneeze real bad (laughs) we don't know what's going on everybody's everybody's (laughs) sneezing my buddy gil just sprouted a third eye and a tentacle <laughs> and uh but i think we're, we're good we're gonna be all right <laughs> so i don't know it's cool it's interesting but yeah, i hope we turn out okay i'm sure we'll be fine what do you suggest all right, at this point in the show, as we're winding down, we're reaching the home stretch here. We would like to get into our What Do You Suggest segment, which is where, like the title says, we suggest stuff to you. We get very suggestive. Megan can be very suggestive. You need to watch out for her. She'll I don't put, know what you're talking about. <laughs> she'll put all sorts of things in your head, and then when you're not least expecting it, Wham! Wham. (laughs) You know, frying pan across the back of the head. (laughs) So anyway, do you guys have some uh, suggestions we'd like to throw at everybody? I got one. Yeah. Yeah. Vito, how about you? Yeah. So so CBS All Access is coming out, or they have come out with The Stand miniseries, a new miniseries based off the Stephen King book, The Stand. Right. So in honor of that, I have been re-listening to the audiobook version of The Stand at work. Okay. So my recommendation is the audiobook of The Stand. Okay. Now, is that your preferred method of absorbing this story? Because yeah, I know you've read it and you've seen mini ser- various miniseries and stuff. My preferred method is the extended novel. Okay. But only the first 500 pages. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a section of it you can't stand, right? Yeah, there's like 200, pa- yeah, 200 pages. Once they get to Colorado, dude, I, I just pretty much just skim through all that shit because it's really boring <laughs> to me. And I can't stand it. <laughs> Literally, I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I know you've only just started really watching the series and stuff, but you said it's already differentiating from the they book. They definitely right? are... Well, it's only the first episode, so I don't know if they're going to put that stuff back in later episodes, but yeah, they've cut out a lot of stuff, so like their relationship with other main characters and stuff, so... Yeah, well... Who knows? 11, 22, 63 in it? I was, I'm afraid that's what's going to happen. That's oh, what no. I'm worried about, See, yeah. that's the... Like, with Stephen King miniseries, they're great for the non-Stephen King book fan. Right. Because it's like a gateway drug into Stephen King's novels. But if you're a fan that reads the books first, you're always going to be disappointed with it. Yeah. Well, that's with anything, really. You read the book, you like see the movie, like that didn't live up to what it was supposed to be. Yeah. And as a side note, speaking of that, I was just having a conversation with somebody the other day because you guys know how I'm so anti, in a lot of ways, the prequels of Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm especially Attack of the Clones. I'm always mm-hmm. going on, you guys like Attack of the Clones, I don't. Well, let me, I'm going to defend myself while <laughs> I've got a chance here. Let me bring up a point. Not only is there, because things that I just aesthetically don't like about it, I read the novel of it before the movie mm. came out. Mm. Both Paul, our singer, and I read the novel of it. The novel, I highly recommend everybody read Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. Go get the novelizations. They're so far superior to the mm. movies. I'll we'll have to check those out. Yeah, yeah and, and you know what? And here's my thing, especially since you enjoyed Attack of the Clones so much, mm-hmm. read the book. I think you're going to like it even more. Even more. Okay. Because mm-hmm. the book is great. And it was, see, reading the book and then seeing the movie, it was like, oh, what a letdown. Mm-hmm. Like, there was things they cut out or tones they changed and that i think soured me on it in the first place so that's fair okay but anyway that's a good suggestion megan do you have a suggestion i do have a little suggestion okay Um, i'm going to suggest a business local business actually it's called stone and palette okay it's based in Cherville, indiana right 
and I, I, they do like all these little crafts and everything. Um, I've gone in there a couple times. They do like you could take it home with you and do it from home, and it's it's you could figure it out on your own. They mm-hmm. give you the stencils. They give you everything you possibly need to do this thing. Nice. Um, but what I love about it is that they hire um, their employees. They're all special needs, so they hire them in and put them out to all this work where they probably normally wouldn't be working. So that's kind of cool. Nice. They help out as yeah. needed, the community. Um, but they also, all their stuff um, is recycled. Mm. Like they have recycled granite and stuff like that. Oh, that cool. That they get from where people are just going to throw it out because it doesn't fit like the kitchen or it's imperfect or something like that. So they just, their staff and everything come in and break it all up for us and these little fine things for us to decorate our stuff with. Yeah. And so you do get, to clarify, like you guys, you do things where it's like what you like paint signs for your porch mm-hmm, or paint signs, um, garden decoration things yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Just, yeah. Plants. They got like cheese platters and stuff like that. That's cool. So I'm sure it's even though it's local, I'm sure if you talk to them and stuff, they'll they, they'll ship to you as well. Right. Because they have online. Check them out on Facebook. Stone and Palettes. Yes. Yeah, stone, um, stone and Palettes. Stone okay. and Palettes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, cause some of their wooden stuff comes from those old wooden pallets. That's like and a they huge, just take it back it's a and huge recycle thing now. it. People using those to make like wall uh, panels and stuff mm-hmm. at home and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All that shiplap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's just a, a cool business model and I highly suggest supporting them. Nice. Yeah, no, that's a great great recommendation. And I've seen the stuff you guys have made and it's it's really cool mm-hmm. and fun. And it's affordable. You make mm, some yeah, it's re- not too bad. You make some really nice stuff with it because, you know, you, yeah, you can go, you could pay like $35, $40 or something to make one of these things. And some people might go, oh, you know, that seems a little expensive. But really, it's not. Because if, yeah. if you go into any of these like crafty stores or stuff that pre-sell you like the made things like that, dude, they're asking like 100 bucks, 150 yeah, bucks. That's insane. They're asking a lot for that stuff. Man. Now this means more to me now because I made it. Right. Yeah. So it's actually cheaper in the long run and you made it. So it's a little more meaningful. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, that's a good recommendation too. Both had good recommendations. What do you have for us? Mine is, of course, go figure. Ha <laughs> ha. See, I said figure because uh-huh. it's going to be action figures uh, we should have saw that coming yeah because i have a one-track <laughs> mind and that's all i think about <laughs> is toys and stuff uh just recently i just got my hands on these new action figures that came out they're kind of like a limited series thing from hasbro they're the marvel retro three and three quarter inch uh superhero figures so they're about the size they're similar to the vintage star wars figures and everything okay um but they never made back in those days they never really made figures like this for marvel not in the 70s anyway they they had Mego had done some pocket action heroes and stuff they were and they were quaint they were cool and but they not very comic book accurate later they came out with secret wars which were some of my favorite ones from the 80s and stuff like that but after toy biz did all the ones you probably remember from from toys r us they yeah. had they had all their x men and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff for a while now so they were doing that but for a while now they haven't really done any 3 and 3 quarter inch ones like this so they just brought them back they're only like 5 points of articulation so they're not like hyper real or anything like that but the artwork on the cards and the design of the figures themselves is very like old school mm. 70s, 80s style and everything. And it's like uh, you can get them in these like two pack sets. You get like Captain America and Black Panther, Iron Man and Captain America, mm. uh, Cyclops and Magneto, that that sort of thing. They're, they're really, really cool. They're actually pretty affordable. I think a two pack is only like. 20 bucks or mm. something like that. Oh, that's pretty good. The card art is amazing, classic, old school. It's it's just one of those kind of things that appeals to old guys like me, you know <laughs> what I mean? Because it, it looks like something you would have bought in Toys R Us back in 1982, but better quality, you yeah. know? So anyway, these are... So if you're into Marvel, if you're into that kind of stuff, it's you can find it on hasbropulse.com it's pretty i think it's exclusively available there right now Hmm. i don't know if it's going to show up at other retailers or not i haven't seen it listed anywhere and lastly before we get going uh we always like to recommend some kind of 
podcast or another YouTube channel or something like that because it ain't all about us. <laughs> we get inspired by a lot of stuff, and as fans, we enjoy a lot of stuff. Some of times it's friends or you know people we admire. I'm going to recommend a channel that I know. I don't know if Vito's ever watched it. I know you've watched I've it. I've seen it a few times. Yeah. yeah, and I watch all the time. It's a channel called Weird History on YouTube, and it's really cool. It's this great channel. It's it kind of reminds me of things you would see on the History Channel. Mm -hmm. But this gets really specific. It's usually just like little digestible videos that are anywhere from like 10 minutes to a half an hour long. And it'll get into weird things like uh, it'll be a thing about like, you know, uh, what life was like in a small town in France during the bubonic plague. Nice. And they, and they throw some humor and stuff mm -hmm. in there. Yeah, like it's it's witty. And uh, but it's really informative. Uh, they get into they've even done things where they do year in review things where it's like we go through the 80s and we have a 45 minute special on each year, 1981 and 1985. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of humor and it covers everything from news events to, you know, entertainment to all, all sorts of stuff. It's just it's one of those channels that you can deep dive on and. Get you're lost. You go yeah, down a rabbit hole. You yeah, you're like going and oh. going. <laughs> you're like, holy shit, it's six hours later and I've been <laughs> still sitting here watching this YouTube channel. But yeah, if you're into history stuff, especially if you're into hearing maybe like facts and details that you don't always hear about on all mm -hmm. the typical programs and stuff. This dives into a lot of that really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like what did what did the Templar Knights eat? Oh, nice. You know, weird <laughs> shit like that. And then you're just like, oh, my God, they ate that? That's gross. You know, like there's all. Yeah, they get into all that kind of stuff and everything. So I recommend that channel. Um, it's if I think for most people that listen to our show that you're going to get something out of that channel. So, yep. Weird history. It's what is what it's called. And it's on YouTube. Nice. All right. Well, on that note, I think that's about it. I think that. Uh, Squadcast number 14 is a wrap. Yeah, I think it's another one in the books. And it's done. Geeking, geeking, rap. <laughs> geeking, <laughs> geeking, rap, geeking. Oh, wow. Go, geeky, go, geeky, go. Yep. Busting out TMNT2. Secret yeah, we're of done. the Ooze. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got to see Vanilla Ice perform that live. Oh, dude. Yep. Yeah, that was something. I nice. couldn't believe they were actually he was actually doing it. People were digging it. I'm man. sure they were, <laughs> man. <laughs> Vanilla Ice is a nice guy, man. He's a cool guy. I get to hang out with him a little bit and everything, yeah. and you know, just briefly, very briefly and stuff. But I got friends that know him, and they then hang out with him all the time, and they're like, "Man, he's a great guy." So people can bag on old Rob, but <laughs> you know, he did his thing. Yeah. So just like uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be smooth like ice now, and we're gonna slide right on out of here. So <laughs> everybody, <laughs> hey, I was trying to be smooth, man. <laughs> Sorry, we ruined that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool as ice. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll be back with episode number fifteen. Mm -hmm. Of course, we want your comments and your likes and your subscribes and shares and all that stuff. <laughs> you know, we uh, we appreciate your support. We will be back soon. Until then, I say to you adieu, sir. Farewell. Adios. See ya. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>